Hi guys, welcome to the webinar this week. We're doing a little bit earlier because Paul's uh, going to be travelling to Bangkok today. So this is Richard Fairbairn. Hi everybody. Hi. Ed. Hi. Paul, oh, you can hear me actually sat in an airport at the moment. So. <clears throat> it's, it's quite bad. We can't really hear you. But um, yeah, this is Richard Fairbairn, not Chris. So uh, I'm going to be running the webinar today as I always do. So. This week, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a few questions. Then we're going to talk more about the um, agency license and what you can do with that. I had a lot of questions coming to my support desk this week asking how to kind of monetize, maximize uh, the returns on the agency. So I've talked to a few people I know in offline and I've got some ideas and some information for you on that. But first of all, let's. Let's see if anybody's got any questions or anything before we get going. Just make sure you can hear me as well. Uh, what I'll do, because, because my, my sound might not be too good, what I'll probably do is I'll just try and answer a lot of the questions privately in the text box for people. Uh, and you don't have to put the, the noise that's behind me in the airport. You can't hear much behind you, it's just it's, it's not, like, not very loud, that's all. But have you got any questions uh, to start off with before we get going? Is there any? Don't look like it. Nope. Okay, so first things first. As I said, I've been talking to a couple of people who I know who do very well in offline marketing. It's not something I'm really involved in. I know it's something Paul's not really involved in. So, uh, you know, it's better to speak to people who actually make money in that. So last week we kind of over... Uh, did a little overview of the client section, which is this section. And I had a lot of, as I said, feedback into my support desk talking about how to monetize it as best as possible. Now, this is the information I got from, as I said, from people who make money on selling offline products. So first things first is obviously you can build banners for offline clients. Now, one way to get those clients on board before even actually approaching them is to build the banners for them. Now, I, I kind of went through this with a guy who does offline and they do offline video marketing. So what they do is they create the video, you know, spend- uh, Richard, just one second. Um, what people mentioned has got no video. I'm showing my screen, I can't. No, no, YouTube is quick. Okay. No, I'm going to stop sharing it. I'll share it. So let's see if you can. Can you see it now? You see my screen now? Yep, it's just come on. All good. That's good. Thank you. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. All right, we're still getting nose coming for the screen. Can you not see my screen? I could see it and then it's disappeared again. Can you not see my mouth moving now? Your screen's not there at all, Richard. It, it was there, it appeared, and now it's gone again. Right, you see now, I've stopped and started it again. Can you see now? Yeah, I've stopped. No, it. Right, it's showing here. It's... Right, I'll stop. Okay, showing now. Right, that's it. Showing now. Okay, so just can anybody, can everybody see it now? Yep. Yep. There's so many problems we go to webinar. We are going to be moving to a new system in the next couple of weeks and just need to fully test it first. It's because with GoToWebinar, there's just so many uh, so many problems. Just If my screen does happen to go off, just let me know and I'll stop. So I forgot where I was now. Um, yeah, All right. So I was speaking to, there's not much to see anyway. It's all it is, is the Pixel uh, back end. I've been speaking to a couple of guys who do video marketing offline. Now, what they do is they create the videos before they actually go and try and sell them. So, because it's they say it's easier to sell a finished product than it is actually trying to sell 
a product that you can't kind of describe. Now this is a great fit <clears throat> with Pixel because you can uh, build some amazing banners. Some of these, um, you know, premium templates, etc., look really amazing before, you know, before you even start kind of customizing them. But once you put like a bit of customization to them, um, you know, the offline person's graphics, etc., you can make them look really, really good. So what they do is they'll spend half an hour creating a video. You don't even need to do that. You could spend 10 minutes per, you know, banner creating it. And what they do is they go round then to all the different um, kind of businesses they've built and fought and show the banners they've created. Now, one way to do that with Pixel, and it's actually quite an easy way, is what you could do is if you've got the name of the, off, uh, the email for the offline business that you wanted to create for, so what you could do is you could already create them a client site. So, for example, let's say you're creating a a um, some banners for a restaurant. Oh, let's call it burger restaurant. You get the guy's email, so uh, it could be Bob at burgers.com. Create the password for him. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that. Just call it burger. So submit. I'm just let me get that added in there. So you see it's been created. So and all you need to do is as long as you've got his email, what, what you can do is once you start creating the banners for the burger restaurant. So let's come across the graphics creator. All fat graphics. Let's find something to, uh, to do with food. So, diet. Um. Here we go. So, I mean, I, I personally, if I was creating uh, banners for offline clients, I'd be using. Um, the premium templates rather than these kind of templates. So let, let, let in fact, let's do that let's, rather than, so let's, um, let's use a carousel banner. So obviously as you can see, you know, you could have different screens for different sections of the uh, restaurant. You could have a link there to go book the restaurant, book a table, etc., or call them. So let's uh, save this up. Let's save it as burger. Use a thumbnail, the first thumbnail. Save template. So let's go back to the screen. So, what we need to do then is we need to create a campaign for it. So, we've got you can see it's done here. So, let's create a campaign. We're going to call it um, burgers. Paint. So you can see it's done there. Now the bot banner at the moment is I clicked on it. The banner is not activated, so you need to do it is activate it. So what you could do is you could create maybe 10, 15 different really good premium banners for that restaurant. Now obviously I haven't really spent any time with that now. If you wanted to make sure that you can get the client, so you could probably spend you know five minutes on each each um Banner, you could get kind of a copy of their logo, anything kind of um, tags they're using, like catchy phrases or anything like that from the website if they've got one. <clears throat> Build a set of banners. All you need to do then is if you come back to clients, so that where we've gone, we've gone burger restaurant here. So, what you need to do then is click edit, and then all you need to do is add him to the campaign. So, approve access. It's done so then what you do is you'd give him the client login for pixel so they get this this login here now this is all going to be able to be customized so if you're doing like offline marketing you'll be able to add your own kind of domain there and overlay your own domain <coughs> for me i can't remember exactly what email i used uh, right, okay so you could go to the restaurant 
you could present via your iPad, your laptop, etc. What you can do is you can give him his own login. And he'll instantly see the banners that you've created and you can you know view them, you can see exactly what he's you know what he wants to do there. You can download them if you wish, but obviously you're not going to give him access to download them till you've you know kind of made the sale type of thing. <clears throat> so that's an easy way to present to somebody, to present to a business because it, you've kind of done all the work already. So yeah, it, it may take you 30 minutes an hour to set that all up, but it looks much, much more professional than it, you know, just going in and telling them somebody what you can do. If you go in and actually show them what you can do and they can see it in kind of, you know, real world, they can actually envisage it, you know, use it in their business. So that's one, um, one way that these guys told me they, they sell video marketing banners, etc. Now, another way, this is, this is a good way that I'd look at kind of, um, selling to local businesses in my area if I was going to sell in this area <clears throat> now you've got like for example and bed clothes all that kind of stuff I would look at building a website that was kind of a local website you know using long tail keywords that was really targeted to the place that you was trying to sell the banners to so for example I live in the Wakefield area I, I kind of get some kind of domain name that men you know that i could sell banners spots on that website to kind of local businesses and the one great thing about that is it's much easier to rank a kind of a local website than it is kind of a you know a high you know high keyword website so it's, it's much much easier to do that so what i do is i'd rank the website as i said it's quite easy Rank the, web, rank the website, then I'd, what I'd do is I'd start filling it with banners for local businesses and do the exact same scenario as the guys with the video marketing do. I start filling it with websites. I give all those businesses their own kind of login here so they could see the views you will get in, the clicks. If they were getting any clicks, obviously you're going to need to build that up. And they'd be able to swap around the banners, see which works best for them in which kind of spot. So what I'd do is rather than selling a banner design, I'd design the banners and sell them the spots on the site that I create for like a local a local town website. I mean, that's it's quite easy to do for me because I I live in a small kind of area. Different if you live in somewhere like New York or anything like that, you probably have to kind of do it like by a borough or know just a certain locale type of thing so before we go any further i'm oh, sorry just quick on there, question uh, anthony says can we use all the banners on our platforms like google adwords facebook ads etc i can't hear you mate that's big up sorry sorry um, could you, if you could look in the questions uh, there's a couple from anthony right just two seconds anthony right okay yeah <clears throat> They can all be, they have to be IAB compatible, compatible, sorry. Now, the banners I just went through, uh, let me go back here. If you go to premium banners, most of these are IAB compatible. <clears throat> now, depending on the sizes, the sizes that we have in here are default sizes that are IAB compatible. Now, if you start changing these to kind of silly sizes where they're like a thousand width, they don't become IAB compatible anymore. <clears throat> so as long as you keep in these sizes or check with the sites that you're trying to get um, embedded on or uh, added to, then as long as you stay within IAB compatible sizes, and yet these are the perfect ones to use. The ones in the all graphics, the um, HTML5 ones, they are compatible. They, you can use them in certain networks, but Google AdWords, FBA ads, and things like that, you can't. So if you wanted to use those in, for example, Facebook ads, you'd have to create a GIF or a JPEG or a ping from the image that you created in the <coughs> graphics section, which is quite easy to do when you come to our graphics. For example, uh, Let's do this one if you come to here. 
you come to download you could you download it in jpg or ping and then or gif and they <coughs> would be compatible with facebook ads so let's go back there next question what's a reasonable amount of to charge a client for 10 to 15 banners like this now that all depends again on the business i mean if if you're looking at a kind of a really nice restaurant and um he wants some nice you know banners that's going to take you a day's work i would be charging at least 25 to 35 dollars per banner probably more i probably for a set of 10 to 15 i probably i'd want at least kind of four to five hundred dollars if i was going to spend at least a day doing them and you've got to remember that with the client section of pixel because you're giving that section to your client you know you can automatically edit them so if they don't like it they don't if you were doing this as a normal kind of business and you're building banners for someone you'd have to get all the banners designed send them via email they would tell you what changes they want to send them back blah 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 it takes quite a while backwards and forwards with the client section of pixel you don't need to do that all you need all the guy needs to do is say look banner one needs this doing banner need, two needs this doing banner three needs to do it, that doing and then you could instantly edit those banners through your copy of pixel and they see the edits in real time so it's much much easier to do something like that using pixel but yeah i would be charging at least four to five hundred dollars for a set of 10 to 15. So Rob says banners still work. Yep, I use banners all the time. Um, I mean, they definitely work in the big networks because people still pay a, a lot to um, to get the, you know the banners placed in certain sites. What kind of tool is used to create the website? Uh, you're talking about the website to host the banners um you, you could use any kind of site you could use wordpress html you could uh, use something like yeah, any really website creation software would do but if you're going to try and rank it i would be looking at something like wordpress or html that wouldn't use any of the free creation sites out there had to reconnect flight out okay Okay, we've got any more questions before we carry on? Anthony says, great idea, thanks for sharing that, that's no problem. Okay, no more questions. Okay. So, going back to the client side, now as we said, um, I've got to excuse next noise next door, they're in a party, I think. Um, now, one other way to profit from this client side is to do all the management for for the um, for the client. So rather than just building the banner, you could build a banner. They get the banner over here. They can download it, do whatever they want, etc. <clears throat> Obviously, you can charge in, uh, more for a certain amount of edits. So, for example, you could charge twenty dollars, twenty five dollars for a banner then that could include two two edits then you could charge maybe 35 dollars for a banner with unlimited edits etc and it it's so easy compared to kind of normal banner design because rather than as i said going backwards and forwards with your client you can instantly do it from your copy and it gets transferred to their copy in the client side of pixels so there's no backwards and forwards it doesn't take a long time to do and they also, uh, <clears throat> you can also do a full management system here. So not only could could you kind of design the banner for them, but you could also do the um, kind of source of traffic for them. This is something that I, if I was doing this kind of business, this is what I'd be looking at. Because a lot of people, a lot of businesses online <clears throat> don't know where to buy traffic from, don't know where you know, where they should be advertising, definitely local businesses. So what I'd be doing is I would be building the banners, getting them on as a client for the banners at first, then adding on to that as an extra, you know, that you will find and source 
best places for those banners to be hosted, to be, you know, to get the best views, get the best clicks, etc. Now the great thing, <clears throat> the great thing about Pixel from a client side as well, you get a full analytics section. You obviously you can't see anything more because it's just a banner I've just meant, built. <clears throat> you have to excuse me, I've got to click off. But this is kind of a lot of people have missed this section, not really understood what it is. This is not just <clears throat> a section to check, you know, the analytics for banner where it's been clicked, etc. So it's a full, it's a full-on kind of hotspot. So what? So with these banners, you you can actually track where the banners are being clicked. I don't mean in what location. I mean, but what actual section of the banner is being clicked? So. If your call to action is working better on your second slide at the right hand side, this is going to show you that as, as opposed to the call to action on the left hand side on the third slide. So you're going to be able to do a full track on your client's banners to see what they're working with, to see what they're working best with. And you can deliver all, all this information to your client as well. You can see whether they're working best on desktop, tablets, mobiles, what could best you know, obviously this is not really relevant if you're doing offline marketing, but countries, you can see what day of the week they're getting the most clicks, the most engagement with and get best click through. So what you can do is you can also provide your client a full kind of um, almost like a full tracking system with your banners. So if you were to kind of build up, um, like go to kind of websites and, and source out the best places to kind of host those banners for example a burger restaurant you know it, it'd be somewhere where local people are looking for places to eat so if you could find somewhere like that you could get the banners built you could keep the track of them see how they're working the client can see at the same time and you can like tweak and you know split test them make them better obviously increasing your clients ratio uh, your clicks all that kind of stuff your impressions so what you can do is you can build a, a full portfolio rather than just building the banners for the clients. You can also build, you know, a full tracking system, you know, see which banners is creating, you're creating and working best <clears throat> to see. And then also adding to that, you know, multiple designs, also adding to that somewhere you can source the traffic from. If you've got somewhere, you know, locally you can do that. You can see all that here, the views, the clicks, and obviously the client can as well. So you can see conversions, click conversions. So it's a great way for you to kind of, um, you know, get, offer a full service to offline clients. I've got another question coming. It says, hi for franchises and branded stores. They have images that are provided by sizes that works well on the websites. Is there a template where you can specify the template size to accommodate original image dimensions, so could please demo that. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm not quite understanding you. I'll just read your question again. Hi, for franchises and branded stores, they have images that are provided by OEM with specific sizes that works well on their websites. Is there a template that you can specify the template size to accommodate original image dimensions? If so, I think what um, I think what I'm almost saying uh, is, um, can you? change the actual template sizes which you can they're all free form so i think it's just it just needs to see where you can actually define the sizes of each of the banners Two seconds, I'll go back to pixel. So in the graphics creator if you come to flat graphics come to editor because you've got to remember just sorry i'll just go back all these are just these are just templates you don't have to use these if you wish you know they're only there if you want to <clears throat> come back to editor just drop this out of size so you've, got, you've already got your banner dimensions here all set. We've got different things like, like Facebook ads, half page banners, all that kind of stuff. But here, like Paul says, it's totally free form. So you can actually change, put whatever size you want in there. So if you want that 550 by 100, you can. It's entirely up to you. You can do whatever you want to um, fit your image into that banner, if that's what you meant. So your next question was also for Facebook, because there are certain dimensions of the images. Are they 
are there predefined templates that work on Facebook and social media platforms like Facebook banners? Yes, we've got those those in here. There is some more coming because there's so you've got Facebook groups, you've got Facebook profiles, Twitter, the Twitter profiles. So you, you've got quite a few in there, but we've, we're also adding in the new, because we've got some new um, Facebook ad sizes, which are going into there as well. They'll be all in that drop down box. Paolo says, can you point us where to learn the best places to run our banners? Right. <clears throat> your banners, where you're going to run your banners all depends on what kind of niche you're in. So there's multiple, multiple different places to run different kind of niches. You know, if, if you're targeting a certain thing in a certain category, it, it, it's, it's very, very, very difficult to do that without kind of knowing what niche. If you can tell us what niche you're in, then can probably help you a little bit better. Okay, we got any more questions? Right, Paulo says he's in Brazilian photography. Now, that's a, that's a difficult one actually. <laughs> um, so you, you, you'd be wanting to target I don't quite understand what you mean by Brazilian photography. So you're targeting, um, you're selling pictures from Brazilian landscapes, that kind of thing, I'm assuming. So um, you, I don't know, because that would apply to anybody who probably visited Brazil might be interested in it. So it's no good targeting just Brazil. Um, it, it, it's a hard one. I'd have to think about that a little bit more. It's not something I've ever really come across, unless you've got any ideas, Paul. Yeah, we'll get back to Paul then. Right, yeah. It's a bit of a difficult one. Boutique style. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure what boutique style is neither. I'm sorry, I'm not really au fait with photography at the moment. I'll just take it on my camera. That's, that's it. Um, you'd be better open a support ticket. If you open a support ticket, tell us a little bit more about it, um, then we'd probably be able to help you a little bit better. So you, you know Facebook and Google have some ad networks. Oh, yeah. I mean, Facebook has obviously ad network. Google has ad networks. There's, there's, mu there's a multitude of different ad networks all over. Um, you can buy kind of banners uh, I'm just trying to think of a couple of big ones that we use. Um, let me go to a couple. Right. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of different sites. You know, t what, what these sites do <coughs> is that they'll kind of source the places where they can place your your ads and what you do is you kind of bid on um you know bid how much you want to spend just same as facebook ads how much you want to spend how much you want to pay for your click through and then you can target certain site uh, sites that you know you would want to advertise on so for example if i'm not sure of any kind of site that's big in brazilian photography but if you if you wanted to say advertise on that site, what you'd do is you'd find where the ad network was for that site. Because I can guarantee every big site has some type of ad network on the back end. So all you'd do is find out exactly what ad network was being used on that site, and then just go to that ad network, sign up for an account, and start advertising on the site that you kind of want to, you know, get your ads on. So you'd bid on. Keywords, bid on placements just for that site rather than, you know, like kind of bidding on um, keywords, etc. Yeah, Paul, if you hit me up in support, I'll give you, you know, I'll give you a bit more information and I'll give you a list of what we use. Um, do you know, Omar said, do you know when you'll be removing the resource menu from the client 
campaigns set pages they cannot create the banners themselves yeah we're having that and we'd re completely redoing the resources section so there's a client side because even though they can't create the banners there is some still some um, parts in there that they need kind of tutorials on like um <clears throat> the, the the hot spots i've just showed you if you were just selling the banners and that's or you, they got access to they'd still know how have to know how to run that part out of the embeds etc so what we're doing is we're removing everything that's not needed in that resource section and doubling up just a client's resource section so that'll be done probably in the next 10 days okay we've got any more questions some voices about going <clears throat> No problem, on that. <clears throat> we got any more questions this week? Is anything anybody like? Nope. Anything anybody like to say? Oh. Like me to demo or anything? No. Okay, if we've got no questions. Got an early time this week. I think uh, we've got quite a few people on, but we'll, we'll drop the replay of this in for tomorrow. But no, next week will be that's one. Right. Okay. So we've got no more questions. I mean, if we've got no more questions, may as well end it there. But if anybody's got anything they want to see, anything they want to demo, they can do that. Not a problem. <clears throat> no. Oh, off topic question. Yeah. Off topic's fine. I'm going to have the webinars this, like this for the reseller box bundle. We're putting some videos together for the reseller box bundle and we're going to have a webinar, but we're going to have it after we put the uh, videos together for the reseller box bundle. Uh, Anthony says it would be great to see how to manage the animations on the banners. Yep, I can demo that. That's no problem. Right, okay, so animations. Let's get something on here. Change the slide size just a little bit small. <clears throat> so let's add in a image. Fix. Let's add the arrow in. So have this one insert. So when you, once you put the arrow in, you'll notice as soon as you click on it, you'll see the animation section here come up, pop up. So there's a couple of different sections, the, the, the in section and the out section. Now, if you don't want the out section at all, you just need to set that cursor back completely to wherever you want it. You can see <coughs> it, it, um, as I move the cursor, the time at the bottom changes, so it disappears after 3.8 seconds, 3.9. So you just change that as you wish. Now this one here, again, you can appear after 0 seconds, so you can take it to whichever time scale you wish so you see the little wizard here on the left hand side you just click on that and then what you do is you just set out your uh, control section so for example if you want it to fade and you fade it from the top it's giving you like a kind of a little example there or from the left or top left and you can swing in You can see these are all set as in out, so ease in elastic, out, ease out elastic, ease in back, ease in out back. I personally like swing because it's nice and uh, it's much slower. So you can apply that if you want to preview it. Yeah, that's why. Oh, okay. I may not have saved it if it's looked already logged me out. I've been idle too long. <clears throat> there we go. Just a little 
bit smaller. For some reason the preview button's not working. Second, sorry about this. I don't know if it's my computer or not. It's I can't open the zip file. I'm trying to zip file. Right, I've got a problem with my computer. I think the best thing to just do there is just, just to leave this. No, I, I, for some reason, it's locking up. It's not opening. It's not letting me open any zip files. I had a problem this morning. I had to keep re re uh, rebooting it. I just wonder if we had out of memory. Right, for some reason, I don't know why, but it's not um, it's not previewing it. All right, no it is. <laughs> yeah, there you go. For some reason, I don't know why. It won't preview that. So, um, yeah, so you can move it around and do whatever you want with that. Make it bigger, make it smaller. So if you wanted it to come in from the left, for example, you can make it come in. So you can you can control the ins and the outs with... Um, For some reason, the computer's going haywire. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to uh, reboot the machine, to be honest. I don't know what's happening. Two secs. All right, just take it back to 100%. All right. For some reason, it's... Uh, there we go. Oh, what's up with it today? <laughs> um, yeah. So controlling this, so all you need to do is the ins and out effects are just controlled by these two little wizards here at the bottom. You disappear again, you can set it to disappear straight away. You can put multiple laminations on top of each other. So you can get one to fly in and one to fly out. Um, the, the, like that's controlled by this section, the out section. So, uh, does that answer your question, Anthony? What's the best way to edit a current banner, again, related, related to animations? Best way to edit a banner is if you come to our graphics. Now, if you come to one you've already got in a campaign, you can edit it at the campaign there, but if you click on the name of the uh, banner, You'll see this little box here, little box here it says edit. All you do is click there to edit it. If you haven't assigned it to a campaign, all you need to do is click again, click there to edit it. It'll open it and you can open and edit the campaign. It, the banner, sorry.
Right, uh, I notice Google Browser works best for Pixel. On Safari, some options for Pixel do not work. Yeah, Safari is a funny browser. I, I've got a lot of software that doesn't work on Safari. I'm a big, big Mac user, but um, you know, I do have a few problems with Safari. PowerPoints don't normally, but I still prefer Live Presenter with courage to demonstrate live. Sometimes it doesn't go as planned. That's fine. Thank you, Paolo. <laughs> I've just it's exactly the same thing happened to me this morning. I'd set up for a coaching call five minutes before that I start to go live, my computer froze and I just couldn't do anything. What's the deal with the agency license he mentioned? Um, <clears throat> you, you get the agency, if you're bought into Pixel Evolution, the agency license is included. You get that kind of free of charge just added there. So you can kind of add as many clients, etc., and as you wish. Anthony says, I have no issues with preview at my end. I'm on Windows 10 and Firefox. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's my computer. I think I just need to do kind of a clean of my memory. <clears throat> Richard says, yes, uh, Anthony says, yes, it does. Thanks, Richard. Great. What guys, uh, what, what browser do you recommend for Pixel? I use Google Chrome. It doesn't seem to have any problems at all using Google Chrome, except for one I've just had. <laughs> So you got any more questions before we call it a day? Anything else you'd like me to show, like talk about? Got any more? I, I don't think I have the agency. Mark says there's a link to get it. If you did, you purchase Pixel Evolution, Mark. If you did, it's built into the uh, side here. You'll see it's called. Clients, you'll see at the side it says new, new, that's two of the new sections for the Pixel Evolution users. If you don't see them, you're not a Pixel Evolution purchaser, please let me know in, in a support ticket and I'll, I'll try and help you out. No problem, Anthony, glad you enjoyed it. Hi, hey. Richard, sorry, I'm back now. When my, my connection drops in the airport, I've had to just uh, reboot tether to my phone. Yeah, no worries, man. I know you have a few problems. It's, uh, it's all right. So, you got any more questions before I call it a day? No. If you can send us any questions you want for next week, we're going to be, have to do a little bit earlier one next week because uh, I've got like kind of a thing at church next Thursday night. So, I'll be do we'll be doing a similar time to this week. So, if you've got uh, any questions, please send them across. We can help you as much as possible. Again, it doesn't have to be about Pixel or any of our products. We try and help you with anything you've got, any kind of internet marketing problems. Uh, we'll try as best to help you. Yeah, I'd just like to say thanks, everyone. And I'm sorry that um, this has been a bit difficult while I've been sat in the airport. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you, guys. And this, this recording is going to be in the members area of Pixel Evolution. It'll be in there by tomorrow. Okay. Cheers, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.